Welcome to Leafy Paints, and in this video, I'll be showing you how I made my forest diorama base. Let's crack in. For the base of the diorama, I've gone to the dollar store and picked myself up a picture frame. To avoid getting paint on the edges, I've used masking tape to tape these off, and I've sealed on the back plate with PVA glue. This will avoid anything leaking out the back, and also give me a solid foundation. The first thing I did was go outside, get myself some dry twigs, and just try fit those into place until I had a rough idea of how I wanted to shape the base. I used hot glue, but you can get away with PVA glue or super glue. I've glued a couple of extra twigs onto the branch, just to give it a bit more shape and definition. With the extra branches added to the tree, I've done another test dry fit, just what it looked like. And using some clippers, I just chopped away at the branches until I was happy with the shape and height I was left with. For all the ground of the base, I've gone with cheap dollar saw clay again. This is a slow drying clay, it dries over about a 24 hour period. This gave me lots of time to play around with the base and make any changes along the way with little effort. I've made some moulds using some aquarium rocks. Here's a link to a video how I do my moulds. Once those moulds were set, I pushed some of this clay into the moulds and made myself some rocks. You can use normal stones from the garden or a hobby store. Using these fake rocks will keep the weight of the base down and also once they're painted up, you won't notice a difference. Due to being made out of the clay, I can tear at the rocks to get the shape and size I need. Once I was happy with the final position of the log, I've glued that into place using super glue. Using another little separate piece of twig, this will represent the roots going into the ground and make the tree look a lot more natural. And again, I've glued this into place using super glue. To blend the trees and the rocks into the ground a bit better, I've just used a bit of spare clay and blended it into the edges using a tool or just my finger. With that done, I thought the base looked a bit plain, so I've decided to put a little river in. So to make out the canal of the river, I just simply push my finger in a few areas to start the shape, and then just use a tool to dig out the rest. The tree looked a bit plain to me, so to fill it out, I added a few more twigs onto the ends to just represent roots. This was really easy, just a spare twig and a little bit of super glue to attach it. To fix up the join, I used to use a little bit of clay and smooth that out. I used this method just to attach any extra roots or branches to any of the tree. Also embedding the smaller roots into the soil gives it a more natural look. For the small rocks around the base, I just used little pebbles. To place these in, I just dug out little chunks of the base, dry fitted them in place. Once I was happy with that, I glued them in using super glue. I also glued some of the smaller pebbles into the riverbed. To give the riverbed some texture, I've put down some watered PVA glue first and then just sprinkled over the top of that some sand. To tie in these stones, like before, I've just used some spare clay and just used my finger or tool to blend these in. I've given the entire base a really watery coat of PVA glue, let it dry overnight and this will help seal everything into the base. Mm -hmm. 
due to blending everything together earlier and giving it a few coats of the PVA glue, the texture of the base is very flat. So to bring up the texture again, I've gone with Tamiya Soil Effect. Just using a paintbrush, I've given the base a light coat of this. To undercut the base, I've gone with Vallejo's Black Surface Primer. I've mixed in a little bit of Vallejo's Flow Improver and run this through my airbrush. I applied this until I had good coverage of the entire base. Now it's time to start adding some colour to this base. The first colour I've gone with is Stone Golem from the Army Painter. This is applied through an airbrush with a little bit of Flow Improver mixed in. I've given each rock a few coats of this colour, just slowly building up the grey. To paint the tree in its roots, I've gone with Flat Brown from Vallejo. Again, this is applied with the airbrush, and as usual, with a little Flow Improver mixed in. I'm not too concerned with a bit of overspray onto the grey, as I can always come back in with an airbrush or a paintbrush and fix it up. Or well, the third option is just to cover it up with some foliage later on. For the dirt on the ground, I've gone with a mix of 80-20 flat brown from Vallejo and matte black from the Army Painter. Again, I've applied this with an airbrush and a little bit of flow improver mixed in. And again, with this color, I'm not too worried if I get it onto the others, as we can always fix it up with little touch-ups later. To give the rocks a little bit of a touch-up and brighten them up a little bit, I've gone back to the Stone Golem from the Army Painter, and again, just quickly airbrush this on. Now to painting the details of the base, I've gone with Van Gogh oil paints. The first colour here is Burnt Umber. The second colour here is a 50-50 mix of the Burnt Umber and Ivory Black. The third colour here is Pure Ivory Black. And the last colour here is Permanent Green with a tiny bit of Burnt Umber added to the paint. These have all had some white spirit from Windsor & Newton added to the paint just to thin down the oils. With the white spirit added to the paint, I've given it a real thorough mix. Applying a little bit of the oil paint to the brush, I've just dabbed it onto the model. I've let the oil paint do all the work, finding all the cracks and crevices. In between swapping the colours, I didn't wait for the paint to dry, I just applied the next colour and let the colours naturally bleed into each other. I've used the same technique for all four colours and then just mixed and matched going back and forth between the four colours until I was happy.
With those oil paints applied, I let it dry overnight. I made another mix of the permanent green and burn umber I used before. And I've applied this paint with a bit more control this time. This will represent the moss and grime building up over time. Once I've applied that oil, I've gone over to Vallejo's environmental colours. The two colours here are Slimy Grime Dark and Slimy Grime Light. I've applied these two paints straight from the pot. These two paints were applied to the areas of the base where I just put the oil down. I've gone with the Slimy Grime Dark first, leaving some of the oil visible underneath. Once I was happy with the amount I put down of this colour, I went over to the Slimy Grime Light. Again, just a little bit less, leaving the other two colours a little visible. Finally onto the fun part of the base, putting all the foliage down. I've used multiple kits from different companies. Here currently on the screen is all the materials I use for this project. If you'd like to know exactly what I use, the information is all in the description below. For all the light foliage, I've just used watered down PVA glue to stick it down. For the heavier foliage, I've either used super glue or straight PVA glue for this. In between each step, I've made a really watery mix of PVA glue. I let that soak into all the foliage to really tie it in. Here I've got a really watery mix of PVA glue. Using an old paintbrush, I just place it onto the base. And with my flock, I just sprinkle it over the top. To remove any excess flock from the base, I just tipped it on the side, gave it a slight tap, and I was all good. I've applied the watered down PVA glue to the base using a dropper bottle or just with my paintbrush. the slightly bigger shrubs, I've put down some PVA glue first using a paintbrush and just place them on top. To glue in these shrubs, I just popped a little hole in the base using my tweezers with a bit of super glue on it and placed it inside. To remove some of the leaves from the autumn shrubbery, I've just ground it between my fingers. This was a really simple method to get the effect of fallen leaves. I applied the green leaf litter from Green Stuff World in the exact same way crushing it up slightly in my fingers and sprinkling it onto the base. To apply the grass tufts to the base, I simply picked them up with a pair of tweezers, dipped them in a bit of PVA glue and gently applied those to the base. And yet again, I'm applying the watered down PVA glue with the dropper bottle to help seal in the basing materials. Now it's time to remove the tape from the base. While removing the tape, some of the edges did come up with the base, unfortunately. Tearing little pieces of the model and removing some of the foliage. This is not a big deal, so I just reapplied some oil paint into those areas and placed down some extra foliage to cover up the damage.
Using all that cloth, I'm giving the picture frame a wipe down just to clean up any excess paint or glue. For the river, I've gone with UV resin. I poured this straight into the riverbed. I gave it about 30 seconds to settle. Once I was happy with how deep the water was going to be, I took it outside in the sun and let that harden. Once that had hardened, I applied a second layer of resin. This time around, I've placed some leaves, flock, and bits of shrubs into the resin. This will give it a nice natural look like the litter has fallen into the water. To attach the models to the base, I've drilled a little hole in the bottom of the model, cut a bit of paper clip to make a little pin, using some super glue, glued that in place, and then glued the model down onto the base. When drilling these holes, just be careful, as I wasn't paying attention when I was doing it, and I drilled a hole straight through the top of his leg. Before gluing the models down, I made sure to dry fit them first, just to be sure on the positioning. For those interested, here are the links to how I painted the Flesh Hound and Prosecutor. With the models finally down on the base, I added some foliage around the feet of the Flesh Hound and also around this rock that the prosecutor is attached to. These little final touch-ups are just to blend these two models into the base more naturally. With that done, the diorama is finally complete and the jewel is ready to begin. Thanks for watching Nafie Paints. If you liked the video, please click the sub button or leave me a like. If there's anything you'd like to see in a future video, please leave a comment in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next one. Catch ya.